stop doing this if you are a non-Indigenous Canadian wanting to make progress and reconciliation. Do you want to make a difference in Indigenous reconciliation? If you're a non-Indigenous Canadian, there are many wonderful ways that you can make a difference in reconciliation with Indigenous people. Reconciliation means restoring friendly relationships with two parties. Reconciliation with Indigenous people as a non-Indigenous person can be a complex journey to begin, and in no way is it smooth sailing. There are a lot of ups and downs and ways that you can become overwhelmed or discouraged along the way. Even if you have the best of intentions as a non-Indigenous person, there are things that you can do that will disrupt your progress or deter you from experiencing success in learning, connecting, and reconciling with Indigenous people and communities. Hi there, I'm Mallory, and if you're not sure what I'm referring to as Indigenous reconciliation, make sure you watch this video right here for a full explanation on the meaning of reconciliation. But for today's video, I really want to explain 10 things to stop doing in order to make progress in Indigenous reconciliation. The first thing that you want to stop doing if you want to make progress in reconciliation is focusing on the negative news, aka the loudest, angriest voices in the room. What this means is paying too much attention to negative news surrounding Indigenous people, Indigenous communities, racism and injustices toward Indigenous people. I know the loudest and angriest negative messages are always the ones that stand out the most. It can be so hard not to do this, trust me, I know, but do you ever listen to negativity too much? If you do, let me know in the comments. Now why you should stop focusing on the negative news for reconciliation is because negativity is going to get you in a negative mindset pattern. It can get overwhelming and it can make you feel discouraged to continue learning or to even get started in your reconciliation efforts because it will feel too uncomfortable or feel like there's a mountain to climb with no positive outcome. What you wanna do instead is focus on the positive stories and progress happening in indigenous communities, positive reconciliation stories. This will help you have positive associations and to feel more invested in indigenous reconciliation if you're focusing on those positive impacts and empowering progress that can make you as a non-indigenous person supporting indigenous reconciliation. So stop focusing on the negative news on social media or traditional news channels. The second thing you want to stop doing if you want to make progress and reconciliation is relying on someone else to make progress and reconciliation. What this means is waiting for people in government or social organizations or people in your organization to make Indigenous reconciliation happen. Why you should stop doing this is because you're putting the responsibility on someone else to make progress, when in reality, you as an individual can take the initiative to begin learning about Indigenous culture, history, all on your own, which will absolutely cause a chain reaction to people in your life, including large organizations that can make radical change. Instead of relying on someone else to make progress in reconciliation, what you want to do instead is find areas of Indigenous culture that genuinely interest you. You don't need to become a history expert on all of the truth. As long as you know the general facts of what happened, that is enough. An important way to support reconciliation is to know the truth and honor the past and present, making Indigenous people and culture and communities relevant and celebrated today. Do you find certain areas of Indigenous culture particularly interesting? I would love to know what they are. Let me know in the comments. So please stop making this mistake by relying on big societal changes. Just take action yourself. The third thing that you want to stop doing if you want to make progress in reconciliation is listening to gatekeepers. Listening to gatekeepers means paying attention to the negative voices that are setting rules and restrictions for participating in anything Indigenous culturally related. Gatekeepers can be Indigenous people or non-Indigenous people that will have these strict, strict rules for who can participate, who can learn, and who can practice Indigenous culture, or who can have any involvement in anything Indigenous. So why you should stop listening to gatekeepers is because gatekeepers are particularly gatekeeping because 
They are allowing the generational trauma that was passed down to them to affect their life today so much to the point that they feel they need to screen out people because they think that they're protecting the culture to only those people who fit a specific criteria. So what you want to do instead is simply don't pay attention to them. The fourth thing that you want to do if you want to make an impact in reconciliation is avoiding learning because it's dark and uncomfortable. What I mean is by procrastinating or choosing not to learn about the true events that occurred in the history of Canada with Indigenous people because of the fact that it's very dark and negative. Now, why you should stop avoiding learning about Indigenous Canada is because avoiding things or avoiding important topics is not going to get you anywhere in life. The only exception to this might be young children who are not emotionally intelligent enough to process the information. But anyone who's close to high school or older, avoiding learning about Indigenous history in Canada is not really excusable. What to do instead is acknowledge that it is a dark and uncomfortable topic, but that's okay because life is not all butterflies and rainbows and being aware of the truth is powerful and allows you to not be ignorant. It allows you to be knowledgeable when you have interactions with indigenous people in the future or non-indigenous allies who might really care if you are knowledgeable of this. So stop avoiding learning about the truth. It does not take very long to learn. The fifth thing that you want to stop doing as a non-Indigenous Canadian if you want to make progress in reconciliation is neglecting your own cultural heritage. What I mean is by neglecting your own cultural heritage, I mean having no reflection or awareness or appreciation for your own cultural background and wherever you came from before your family immigrated to Canada or settled in Canada. What this can look like is adopting the Canadian culture as your own, which is okay, but you might want to stop doing this just for a second if you want to make progress in reconciliation with Indigenous people. Why you should stop neglecting your own cultural heritage if you want to make progress in reconciliation with Indigenous people, it's because Indigenous people will appreciate and connect with you better if you share your Indigenous culture with them, wherever it is that your ancestors originated from. It's something that we can relate to more than just leaning into your settler identity. In a way, by identifying with your cultural background that your ancestors had prior to immigrating to Canada, you're identifying with your identity that comes across more deep-rooted in a way that is more relatable to Indigenous people. Now, how do you accomplish this? Ask your parents or grandparents about your family's background and traditions that were important to them. This learning journey is one that will naturally allow you to explore reconciliation in an authentic way and take action with reconciliation in a genuine way. If you've already done this, please share with me what your cultural background is in the comments. So stop neglecting your own cultural heritage, especially if you want Indigenous people to relate to you. The sixth thing that you want to stop doing as a non-Indigenous Canadian, if you want to make progress or take action in reconciliation, is resisting the true history of Canada. What I mean by resisting the true history of Canada is being in the state of disbelief or denial that these truths that have been discovered couldn't be real or that the research and stories are false or questioning why these indigenous issues and conversations have become more relevant in the last few years. It's really common for non-Indigenous Canadians to resist the true history of Canada. This is because when we're growing up, we're supposed to trust teachers and educators and adults that have our education in our future, in their hands, because what they share with us and what they teach us, they have a due diligence to teach us the right things and try their best to set us on the right path for our lives, right? Now, why you should stop resisting the true history of Canada is because you're likely insulting a lot of people in your life, non-Indigenous or Indigenous, by denying the truth or not taking action in learning about the truth and the importance 
of reconciliation. So what to do instead of resisting or being in denial or questioning is to accept and learn because learning more about it will help you understand maybe that Canada's leaders thought they knew what was best for Indigenous people or something like that. And even if what happened seems too horrible to be true, it is true. So stop resisting the true history of Canada. The seventh thing you want to stop doing if you want to make progress in reconciliation is opting out of learning because you have friends or family who are Indigenous. What this means is if you have family or friends who are Indigenous, it doesn't mean that you have a free pass out of reconciliation. You don't need to learn about the true history. I've seen this a lot. And if you have close people in your life who are Indigenous, you probably and naturally lean on those people to be your source of information. And therefore you think you have them as a close connection. So learning on your own isn't needed or reconciliation isn't needed because you have those relationships already. Now, why you should stop opting out of learning? Indigenous reconciliation is a very personal, including for those who are non-Indigenous Canadians. The process of learning about these events that took place in a nation that you call home can have personal effects on you that are unique to you as an individual, especially if you have friends and family who are Indigenous. Discovering some of the truth of Indigenous Canada can make you feel an even larger amount of shame or guilt surrounding what took place that you might even receive from your family or friends who are Indigenous. Learning about the true history and learning about ways of taking action as a non-Indigenous person and how you can support people that are close to you who are of Indigenous background is really, really important. And knowledge can support you in your interactions with those people that are likely really important in your life. Now, what to do instead is learn on your own as an individual, reflect on what you've learned and how it affects you personally, because conversations that you might have with your family and friends can be very intimate. So equip yourself with knowledge that you can be better prepared for those deep conversations with people that really matter to you in your personal support circle. So if you have indigenous friends or family, stop thinking that learning or reconciliation isn't needed for you because it is. I really wanna know if this one hits close to home for you, if you have indigenous friends and feel like this point is helpful for you or not. Comment below what you think as I've never shared these thoughts on the channel before. All right, moving on to number eight. The eighth thing you wanna stop doing as a non-Indigenous Canadian if you want to make progress in reconciliation is assuming all Indigenous people are offended by things. What this means is believing or making blanket statements such as all Indigenous people are offended by Native American logos or headdress apparel or cultural appropriation or all Indigenous people are offended by the term powwow to describe a meeting or something. All indigenous people are offended by the term Indian. One of the biggest reasons that you should stop this is because it's incorrect. Making blanket statements is generalizing. And yes, some indigenous people are offended by some of these things, but there are a lot of indigenous people who are not personally offended by certain logos or sayings or names or way of addressing indigenous people as a whole. So stop assuming all indigenous people are offended by things because indigenous people as a whole have many different subcultures with hundreds of nations and tribes. So our beliefs, values, teachings are unique and different. Another reason you should stop assuming is because it will naturally make you feel really defensive and you won't interact with indigenous people at all or you'll immediately think that you can't ask someone, hey, is this offensive or I'm just trying to learn. What to do instead is first get to know the indigenous individual or indigenous community or group or organization that you are interacting with. Get to know them instead of assuming that all indigenous people are offended by things. Share your intentions for learning and that you do not want to be offensive and that you come from a place of respect and then try to gauge the situation on their comfort level, your comfort level, and use your best judgment to ask if a certain something 
is offensive to them personally or not. So stop assuming that all indigenous people are offended by things because indigenous people are extremely diverse. The ninth thing you want to stop doing if you want to take action and reconciliation and make progress is stop asking, how can I help? What I mean is asking, how can I help you as an indigenous person? This has actually happened many, many times in the past as non-indigenous person being apologetic and asking what they can do to help with the pain and the wrongdoings and the horrible mess. What can I do to help you as an indigenous person? who was wronged. Now, why you should stop asking the questions specifically worded like this, how can I help, is because it implies that we need help. There are so many indigenous people who have no desire for reconciliation because they're still holding on to the pain and trauma, or they're not ready to heal yet, or they're trying to heal, but it's a very difficult thing to do. So asking someone, or even a community or a group of people who are in their process of healing, what can you do to help? A lot of times it's just best to leave them alone until they're ready to talk or ready to connect in some way or just listen to what they have to say. What you wanna do instead of this is ask yourself why you want to reconcile with indigenous people. What is meaningful to you? Why are you passionate about the things that you are passionate about? After you have learned about the truth of indigenous people in Canada, what does it mean to you? How do you feel? Why is it relevant to you as an individual? Why are your intentions to support indigenous people in truth and reconciliation the ones that they are? I talk a lot about setting focused and clear intentions, whether you're a non-indigenous person wanting to become an indigenous ally, or if you're an indigenous person wanting to reconnect with your cultural identity, Clear intentions are so important and it comes with asking yourself why questions instead of how questions. So in sum, stop asking how can I help and ask why do I want Indigenous reconciliation. Now the 10th thing that you want to stop doing as a non-Indigenous Canadian if you want to make progress in reconciliation is stop feeling personal shame for the country's wrongdoings. What this means is taking personal responsibility for the decisions that Canada's leaders made and laws that they created. The Canadian government and the Catholic Church created Indigenous residential schools and the Canadian government created the Indian Act to destroy Indigenous culture, language, ways of knowing, and the traditional way of life. Non-Indigenous Canadians have a responsibility to educate themselves on the truth of Indigenous history and also to make an effort in their actions toward reconciliation. Yes, feeling shame is natural and it shows that you have a high level of empathy, which is amazing and necessary for reconciliation to take place. However, it's not going to be helpful to live in those feelings of shame because shame is a very negative mindset to have and it isn't going to serve you well in your truth and reconciliation efforts. Another reason why you don't want to live with feelings of shame is because you might come across gatekeepers who will leverage your feelings and blame you, manipulate you into thinking you shouldn't learn about indigenous culture or take part in indigenous cultural practices. If you're someone who feels deep personal shame for the country's wrongdoings in Canadian history, you should try to stop feeling responsible because you're not. What to do instead is focus on your current responsibility to educate yourself on truth and indigenous history and prioritize your actions towards supporting others to become indigenous allies for truth and reconciliation. If you like this video, you should definitely check out this one right here. What was your main takeaway from this video? I am dying to know your thoughts. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave me your comments down below. Share this video with your friends. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.